Hello everyone, how's your gaming day going so far? Um, over here we're going to do a quick review first impressions of Ragusa. Um, I say first impressions, I, I use the word review and this is something I've touched upon in the past. I believe a single play qualifies a game for a review. Um, I think it should be disclaimed to an extent that you're not, you know, playing it 14 times. But a review doesn't have to be something that you play it multiple times for. Uh, this is no different than when you watch a movie. A, a, a critic of a movie doesn't have to watch a movie three times to get the nuances. Uh, the more you watch something it enables you to give a quantitatively different type of review. Uh, but I believe a single play is still a review. A single play still reflects your opinion of the game and how you felt about the game. The more you play it, the more you can obviously adjust for whether there's more to add or not, but a single play can still be a review. That being said, in general, I will be making a point of if there are, if there is a single play under my belt when I give a review, I will also add that it's a first impressions as well. Um, just to just to the sake of, of qualifying what I'm saying, why I'm saying, and whatnot. That disclaimer aside, uh, Ragusa is a game that I was heavily looking forward to and is one of my bigger disappointments of, well, technically of 2020, because I did play it two days ago, but I'm still in 2019 mode, so let's call it one of my bigger disappointments of 2019, so that we can still leave 2020 nice and untouched uh, by these kinds of events. Um, I find that thanks to the 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 herd of opinions out there thanks to the ratings on board game geek the 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 opinions from the reviewers i follow rado dice tower uh, you know shut up and sit down uh, no pun included there's a variety of uh, different reviewers out there that i follow and watch their opinions and between that and ratings on board game geek i find that very thankfully i have very few real disappointments every year now i don't keep every game i play that is a very different metric by any means. Keeping a game is 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 a contest. It's a contest of I try to keep my a very lean collection, something I've talked about a lot, and I try to keep uh, roughly in terms of what I refer to as game night games, meaning heavier games like this shelf over here, for instance. This is more my lighter fare for kids, family, friends that aren't into games. But in terms of heavier game night games, I try to keep my collection to closer to around 100 games. I think it's a little over right now, and I'm fine with that. But I, I don't like like it going too high. There's only so many games you can play, especially when I'd love to play a game like Innis 14 times a year, if not more. Uh, so I try to keep a very lean collection. So when I play a game that doesn't stay in my collection it doesn't mean I was disappointed by it. It just means it didn't make the cut. In terms of a heavy competition world, a game has to be incredible and amazing. Uh, take Thunderstone Quest, which is a game I played in 2019 that I was very much looking forward to, and I was disappointed. I was disappointed that I didn't love it as much as I would have liked, but it was still a great game and a great experience. I just felt I'd rather play other games. It, it was enjoyable, but other games are better. Uh, that's generally how I feel about most games. It was enjoyable, but other games are better. I find that real disappointments tend to happen to me two to three times a year. Um, and, and I will note, by the way, as an aside, um, I do recognize the, uh, the irony, if you will, of right after, you know, putting up a review for a, a Food Chain Magnet to counter Tom Vassell's review of Food Chain Magnet, um, now giving my own, you know, look how disappointed I was by this game. So I, I, I will give the usual disclaimer of it doesn't mean it's not a good game, it doesn't mean it's not a good game for you, it doesn't mean it's not a game you enjoy, it doesn't mean there's not more potential for it. All those things are true. This is just reflecting my own feelings and why I felt the way I do. Take what you want from those opinions. Um, and if somebody wants to post a counter video of why I should love Ragusa, by all means, send me a link, I'll watch it. I Those real disappointments, which I was touching upon, happen two or three times a year where a game I really wanted to like just not just didn't make it in my collection, but I didn't enjoy that, that that the game time felt like a waste. Uh, when I played Thunderstone Quest, the game time wasn't a waste. It was an investment in a game that was fun to play and could have made my collection. It was an investment that when I whether or not I keep the game, the investment's a payoff. I played it. Do I want to keep it or not? Now I know. A game has to be fairly bad in terms or the gaming experience has to be fairly bad for me to feel that not only am I not keeping the game, but that was a waste. I would rather have not have spent that time playing that at all. I'd rather have cut out early even. And for a game that was only 90 minutes to play, feeling like I would have cut out early was is a lot. Uh, Ragusa is a game that, the way my game group and I put it, is it kind of has the potential to be a Catan 
uh, a new katan in, in its its style, not in its accessibility, but the the actual play was intriguing in a in an interesting way. Yeah, the basic principle of the game is you have a hex system. I wonder how much I can get over here. I don't know how much you can see in there, but there's a bunch of hexes on the board that your players are slowly playing out houses one at a time. And the first half of the game involves you putting out houses to lock in your resources. In our case, we played a three-player game. Each player got, was it four players? A four-player game. Each player, therefore, gets ten houses. And that's that. those are your ten movements throughout the whole game. Just ten movements. So you take a house, you place it out, and you get access to those resources. Those are your first two to four moves depending on the strategy you're pursuing. The remainder of your eight to ten moves, eight to six to eight moves, is spent placing your houses around the city, which is already far more interesting. Because in the city, when you place a house out, you trigger a benefit, but everyone else who has a house there already also triggers that benefit. So you're playing this game of trying to lock in early actions, actions that you believe will be pursued by others, in in and therefore when people go there, you'll be getting those additional actions triggered again and again and again. Kind of like, I mean, Glenn Moore, which I have to put a review up as well. Glenn Moore has, a, has an interesting system where every time you add a tile to your tableau, you re-trigger all the adjacent buildings. And this is sort of the same idea, but in a way more interesting because you're not just re-triggering based off of your own placements, but you're having your opponents re-trigger your actions for you, which adds a strategic depth that I really like. The problem is I didn't like the rest of the game around it, and not just didn't like it, but I, I really didn't like the rest of the game around it. Uh, and I'm going to go through a variety of points of why I didn't like it. And ultimately, it doesn't mean it's not a good game. We all agreed that if we played it again, we would enjoy it more. But we also all agreed that if we played it again, it would still not stay in our collection. Uh, and, and the reasons I didn't like this game is, the first of all, is the entire dichotomy of the first placements of acquiring resources versus the later placements of going in the city. The way the game sets it up, and this is an, this is an opinion I'm happy to take back after multiple plays. This is, this is more of a of a general opinion that, that it could be wrong about, but it kind of just feels like busy work. It doesn't really feel like there's any huge level of strategic depth in your first initial placements. Uh, it does change what things you have access to, but it, it the system of, of the way they do it just feels like busy work. It just feels like you have to get your two extra moves in, your three extra moves in, and then you move to the second half of the game where you can actually start playing the game. Um, the second reason is that the rule set and, and everything around that core mechanic felt convoluted. It felt like actions, abilities, and rewards that were put together for the sake of having a framework around your game. There's, there's like, just to give you one example of this, there's a scoring system at the end where you score for your longest segment of a wall. It doesn't, it didn't feel, nothing about that felt like it made sense in the context of the game. It literally just felt like, hey, we have to have a system and a framework, so let's put that in place. Or there's these ship cards where you basically get to transport the goods you've produced, and you go to this one area and you sell your goods on a ship. And again, it works. It does, it does the job of essentially you have to have an endpoint for your resources or why are you creating them. And so the game does give you two or three ways of converting your commodities. Um, there's basically three levels. There's resources, resources that get turned into advanced commodities, and you have to do something with those commodities. So the game gives you ways to deal with those commodities, but they all feel manufactured. None of them feel natural. This doesn't feel like Glen Moore. When, when, in Glen Moore, when you turn around and rotate your goods for victory points, it feels like a natural system, the way you're selling off your cattle or whatnot. In this game, the, the, the entire system of the game, every single action around the game felt convoluted. It, just, it felt like a, a, a system that was put into place for the sake of having a game, for the sake of having a framework. The actual a aspect of the game in which you take a house, put it down, and rely on other players to then reinforce how powerful that house will be because it might trigger five, six times throughout the game if you picked well and picked early, that's, that's great. I love that. I want to see that in another game. I want to see it done better in a way that really feels like a, a full engine around it. Um, as it stands, Ragusa, the the artwork was okay, but the, the symbology and everything else was hidden. This is, a, this is another huge problem. I had a huge problem with the graphic design of the game from the aspect of each of the spots, each of the hexes has, uh, first of all, the symbols are hard to see. The symbols are incredibly hard to see on this map, and they do give you an alternative side where the symbols are easier to see, but they didn't really make it easier to see from the sta stance of good board design, they just made the symbols bigger and in your face, so that the, game, the board ends up looking ugly, but hey, you can see that symbol now. 
congratulations. It, it didn't it didn't find that blend of showing it to you without just stamping it giantly in your face. Uh, but in addition to that, they have this 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 rule set of how you can actually go to certain hexes. Every hex in the city has a precondition. Almost every hex has a precondition of how you're supposed to go there, and it's just listed in the rule book. Meaning in the rule book, each one has, oh, you have to have a fig, you have to have two oil production, you have to have two of these or one of those. It's all listed in the rule book. There's not a single icon on the board to tell you what you should or shouldn't go to. So they just added an unnecessary amount of memories, memory aspect to this game of what and how you can do something. And I'm telling you, this is, this is an unnecessary aspect on a game that was, because of the way the game didn't flow, because of the way this whole, this whole thing feels like a hodgepodge of, of aspects mixed together around a good mechanic, it, it it wasn't an easy game to pick up. The rule set was very, very easy, and I, as the person who read the rules and gave over the rules, for the most part, I, I knew what I was doing, but none of my, my none of my fellow players had any idea of what was happening, and you had to go through concepts multiple times. Every round, there was a new instance of one, port, one person at the table reinforcing that, yes, I had taught that rule, and the other two players going, huh, really? That's how that worked? Meaning constantly, I clearly had conveyed something, but people weren't picking it up. And I teach a lot of games. I'm, I'm, like, I understand the context of not everything gets picked up, I do, but this was, in comparison to get regular game teaching at our table, this was a beast for what is what should be a simple game. So the, the graphic design was terrible, the memory aspect was terrible, the mechanics don't flow together well, they feel like they're there just to support the framework of a game. Um, and. I mean, it was disappointing. It really was disappointing. It didn't feel rewarding. Um, it, it it was a good concept, but one that didn't deliver for me and my group. I'm going to chalk this up to as being a disappointment in 2019. Uh, we are not giving it a second play. We do recognize that multiple plays would improve the game. We do not believe that it will stay in our collection. We do not believe it can hold up to anything in, in in our collection that's in this genre, whether, uh, I mean, this was not 60 to 90 minutes, so it is a, a, a quicker gameplay. It's not, you know, you can't compare it against a coin, but it's gonna take three hours. But let's say even like Glenn Moore, which I mentioned earlier, I would keep Glenn Moore a million times over this. I would keep a Kingdom Builder, Domain, Five Tribes, a million times over this. There are a lot of games that, that do a great job at being accessible, easy to teach, and rewarding. Ragusa has a great, central mechanic. I really, really appreciated that mechanic of being the first so people can re-trigger. Um, it's very possible it's been done in other games, very possible it's been done in games that I've played. I just don't recall any of them offhand. The closest thing to me is Glenmore, where you re-trigger your own buildings. Um, it, it was not a game that I will be keeping. It's not a game I will be keeping. Uh, this is the last you'll see of it in my collection, unless I do a video of games leaving my collection, in which case I'll reference this video. Uh, but that's basically it. That was my experience playing Ragusa. Um, I'm not doing a whole how to play video on it, it just, you know, basic concept of what I just covered. Um, I hope you enjoyed it if you've played it. Well, I only hope you enjoyed it. If you've enjoyed it, great. If you haven't enjoyed it, let me know. Or let me know your general feelings. If you've played it at all, let me know your feelings in the comments below of, of how you felt about it, why you felt you, why you either liked it or didn't like it, and whether it really, really desperately should be given a second play before it uh, goes away. Um, I probably won't play it again, just for the record. But if you really, really feel I should, let me know. Um, that being said, that is basically it. That was Ragusa. This video is brought to you by Board Game Co. Um, I'm Alex Radcliffe from Board Game Co. Come to our site, try us out, buy, sell, trade games. Uh, if you haven't given us a shot yet, we're definitely worth giving a shot. Uh, if you want to sell games, trade games, liquidate your collection, there's lots of places you can go to buy games. It should be us. But there's fewer places you can go to turn your unplayed games into something you do want. Uh, you know this game, Ragusa, here? This is going to go to the warehouse to be traded to someone else. This is going to en enter that engine of keeping games moving around so that we can all keep a light collection that really caters to the games we want. That's basically it. You can like this video down below, you can subscribe down below or over here, and you can watch another video here. Have a great one.